I wanted to focus my comment on key issues. Whenever we hear access to information, all of us in this room have the role. All of us have a role in the ensuring that universal access to information is realized. From policy makers that we have seen, from legislators that have given us a, a legal framework, from technologists, experts, from media facilities who basically bring that information or present it in a way that it is meaningful. But I want to go back, how does this relate to those of us who are regulating technology? And I say to ensure access to information, there are elements that need to be in place. These elements are produced by a cross-sector of stakeholders. For example, to ensure a proper access to information, there has to be an infrastructure. A communication infrastructure is a vital essential, actually a basic baseline. Because if you don't have infrastructure, how are you going to access information? And that's why for us in telecom, and in NCA in particular, we promote the idea of universal connectivity. Universal connectivity is actually a bedrock for access, access, access to information right on the top of the United Nations Telecommunication Union, universal connectivity is basically to grant universal access to information. Therefore, all member states have been required to promote connectivity to make sure that everybody has access to communication so that they can access information. So, um, that's one of the issues. Of course, we cannot even if we have infrastructure, there is a need for us to have information technology literacy. You see that coming stakeholders to do literacy, from teachers, institution of higher learning, stakeholders. So literacy, digital literacy is necessary for people to be able to access information. Literacy does not mean that uh, is read and write only in your mother tongue or in English, but also digital literacy, you must know to use the tool to access the information you design. Thirdly, you, you need to have open access policy. A policy that grants open access to information is essential. Because if there are exclusivity in certain part of information, everybody who needs information must understand and apply those parameters. Because when we are told that access to information, there are delimitations. There are delimitations defined by law, there are delimitations defined by value, there are delimitations defined by our personalities. That is the boundaries of privacy. Because getting access to information, also you must know what are the lines, what are lines between private information, public information, general information, restricted information. So the narrow definition of that is essential. Fourth, legislation and policy framework must be very clear to protect both the information generators, the information consumers, the information custodians. These are essential issues that we must understand so that when we embark on the issues of access to information, we must also have a comprehensive understanding of what are the essential components that constitute that. It's very important. Number five, user-friendly platforms. The platforms that are used for accessing information or for presenting information ought to be user-friendly, ought to be easily understood. They should not be so complicated. I don't need to have a specialized skill to be able to find out how many degrees have been issued since the formation of our government in 2011. That is the general information. That information should be available somewhere so that the students of history or government can access, analyze, evaluate, critique, and hold government accountable. Of course, all that cannot be done if affordability is not guaranteed. And that's why one of our motto in the NCA is providing affordable, accessible, 
communication to all. And that's why we try to control the pricing, the tariffing. We actually advocate so that whatever service is being given to communication must remain universally accessed by guarantee affordable so that at least one can be able to make a phone call or be able to access internet. This cannot be achieved if we don't guarantee affordability without strangling businesses. And you know affordability is a debatable subject because between the investors and those who are willing to subsidize. And in some instance governments offer subsidization in order to guarantee public access to those services. Number six, we know that information must be generated. So we cannot leave out content diversification. Content creators ought to be supported to encourage that content are diversified to meet the needs of all the categories of our people. Uh, we've seen earlier, uh, uh, the chair of this alluded that there's a need to promote other languages as well. And the, the need is that so that those people who are not reading in English or in Arabic or in Arabic Juba, how do we bring those people to ensure inclusivity? That inclusivity starts from the content generators. Content generators has to be also accepted that content are diversified. So different types of content will be generated and given to, to the, the public. Collaboration and partnership is an essential platform for accessing and for developing. And these points are across all the stakeholders. And you can see it touches everybody. Because these are some of the things you cannot do alone. To generate content requires collaboration with others. To generate content requires us to partner. To generate content, it requires us also to seek support and be supplemented. And we have seen that a number of young people like these days are extensively engaged in generating content, even without knowing. If you see the TikTok today and Facebook and all this stuff, of course, there's a lot of, beside the uh, element that are taking it for their own interest, promoting negative content, but there are rich content. You could literally learn any language of South Sudanese by sitting here having access to information. So someone is generating TikTok and it's making a song, it's, uh, is doing is doing as they call it. Of course, as we generate this content, we need to ensure quality because any content we generate becomes a source of learning for young people. You are actually propagating a culture, and culture as dynamic it is, it will be adapted. So if you are sharing something that you know and nobody has actually controlled us to be different. You are actually propagating the wrong thing. And that's why curation and quality control are essential. And earlier I remember that the last speaker was telling us about we, there are mistakes sometimes that goes. The burden that is left to editors is not only editors alone. It is everybody that generates that content. We must ensure that what we are putting out has some kind of quality. That when we look back 10 years down the line, that video clip, that article you wrote, should remain relevant to the issues of the time it was created. Finally, we need to support. Support services is necessary. And these are, are essential elements for ensuring universal access to information. I have uh, put together earlier a presentation that I think later on will be shared. And uh, I try first to contextualize what, what the, does one need to ensure uh, that we implement access to information. It's one thing that we have a law, but a law alone will not do it. All of us have a stake to play, and that's why I went in and later on I have a presentation that explained from a government perspective what does access to information mean and how can it be achieved. So that, and that break it down into content generators, content management, content controllers, and con those who access it. And these are all put together to give us what we call uh, guaranteeing access to information to our public. Without saying much, I would like to stop here and really thank you for turning up for this event. And I just really wanted to also emphasize the fact that this is a relevant subject across 
all the government entities that are out there, those who did not come, and those who are here. Thank you very much.